Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Tuesday, December 12th, 2017 at 11.31 p.m. Mountain Time. Warming Arctic is the new normal. This headline is everywhere popping up. Extreme weather events will be more frequent. You just come down here and it says the Arctic is going through an unprecedented transition in human history. That will accelerate sea level, which is nonsense, and boost the frequency of extreme weather. Now, a rapidly warming Arctic, where temperatures are rising twice as fast as the rest of the planet, is the new normal. That's what it says. But if you come over here to the data, now what I've got, gone to is snow cover maps at NOAA, and I brought up the data from the United States snow cover from November 12th to December 12th of this year, the last month. And I also brought up the data from November 12th to December 12th of last year, to be fair. So here's November 22nd of last year. And here's November 22nd of this year. Last year, this year, last year, this year. Guys, this is Baffin Island, this is Greenland, this is the Arctic Circle up here, this is the Arctic, this is last year, and this is this year. And according to this article, the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet. But this is last year, and this is this year, on the same date. 22nd, 2016 of November, boom, Wednesday, November 22nd of this year. All right, so let's see if they're full of shit. Let's go forward to December 1st. Both years, they're telling us the Arctic is burning up. So here's December 1st of last year, and here's December 1st of this year. Do you see how the Arctic is burning up there last year? This year, boom, burning up. Look at the polar bears can't get on in the ice this year. Hudson Bay is almost covered before the solstice. Last year, this year, same date, a rapidly warming Arctic where temperatures are rising twice as fast as the rest of the planet. Well, if the temperatures were rising twice as fast, why would there be thousands of square miles more ice a year later? 2016, this year. 2016, this year. If the Arctic is melting this year, check up at Baffin Island here. Last year, this year. There's no change in ice. There's more ice in Hudson Bay. Let's bring it forward. Let's end the nonsense. Oh, man, look at the albedo effect this year. Here's the 12th of this year. Here's the 12th of last year. Last year, this year. Last year, this year. Last year, this year. Nonsense. Extreme cold weather alert issued for Toronto. Seek shelter. Check on, check on loved ones. The city of Toronto, Canada has issued an extreme cold weather alert for Monday, December 12th, 2017 that will be in effect until further notice. This is a heads up to the homeless and um, bring people inside if you know them. If you live in the city, this is not a time to be screwing around. The warning is issued based on information from Environment Canada. Toronto's Medical Officer of Health, extreme cold weather alerts are issued when temperatures are forecast to be minus 15 C or colder. That is brutal. World's largest snowball fight canceled because of too much snow. <laughs> I'll leave you links. Oh my God, it's like a snowball fight. Oh my God. Oh my God. I didn't know there was snow in the global warming, man. 
Snow will continue to fall today across Ohio. A snow uh, truck on Route 303 in Streetsboro could be seen through blowing snow here. A snow truck on in Streetsboro could be seen through blowing snow Tuesday during the area's first winter storm. Heads up, Ohio. Isn't that Ben Davidson's boyhood home? Strengthening Cyclone Orduja to bring life-threatening flooding to Philippines this week. Mm. Do you cosmic ray flux much? Tropical depression Orduja has developed over the Philippine Sea between the Philippines and Pau Palua? Palau? Palau. Yeah, that's how we do it. A track towards the northwest is expected. That would be this way. Boom. Strengthens. Flooding. Cosmic ray flux. We'll get to that. Cobb Carroll continues to set record snowfall. This is coming uh, in from that big southern storm. They went and checked. Severe Weather Team 2 Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns says Cobb and Carroll received record-breaking snowfall, even beating the blizzard of 1993. Boom! Thank you, Glenn Burns. After tallying up all the snow totals, Cobb and Carroll counties set records for the most snowfall ever. And that's a big boom because we're just getting started with winter, even beating the blizzard in 93 with more than a foot reported in both counties. Unmotherprecedented. <laughs> and that's a fact, folks. Weather records set in Hilo as East Hawaii gets cosmic ray fluxed. November was marked by chilly nights. Guys, this chilly nights, if you go down in the article here, we're all just a half a degree above the records. So it's almost record cold, and we're talking record flooding and rain since 1955, breaking records to 1968. That's a big boom. Heads up, Hawaii, underwater. And cosmic ray flux is going to heat the muons, and the uh, volcanic islands are going to erupt unprecedented. In the coming decades, we're going to talk about volcanic eruptions coming up. There's a lot I have uncovered today. Major flooding after rivers overflow in Emilia Romagna in Italia. Several days of heavy rain caused several major rivers, including the Enza and Parma, to burst its banks. This is because of cosmic ray flux and atmospheric compression. The mountains in northern Italy are being pummeled with snow and the lowlands with rain. And what you get is historic flooding. The likes of which have not been seen since the Monda Minimum. Maybe the Dalton Minimum. Or the Glassberg Minimum. These are the records we're breaking because we're entering the Eddy Minimum. That was the sound of your head popping out of your anus. Major flooding after rivers overflow. Citrus crops decline. Continue making a case for federal aid. This is coming out of Florida. Let's just you know, check the numbers. The 2017-18 drop rates at 55% for Valencia, 62% for early mid, 65% for grapefruit. Boom! How much will you pay for a gallon of juice? It's going to be a lot. Unless it's the gray stuff that they recolor and it's called frozen concentrated orange juice. But I wouldn't drink that. Polar bear video, they're getting real. Thank you, BBC, for having some integrity. This bear is sick and not have anything to do with global warming. And they're apologizing in a sense without apologizing. This is what starvation looks like, wrote one of the photographers, Paul Nicklin. The muscles atrophy, no energy. It's a slow, painful death. The clip has gone viral. These images aren't the work of scientists, an impartial documentarian, or even a concerned bystander. They are part of a very calculated public relations exercise called brainwashing, and it's disgusting. This particular animal is probably sick. Biologist Jeff Hidson, writing on Twitter, speculated. It could have some aggressive form of cancer. It's not starving because the ice suddenly disappeared and could no longer hunt. Seals, he said. East Baffin Coast is ice-free in the summer, you idiots. 
We just went over the maps. Last year, this year. Last year they should have starved, because this year there's more ice. Can you say epic fail? Now, how many people in the mainstream, 80% of the idiots, believe this? Ugh, we need to call them. And even up here in the warm Alaska, the ice is closing in today. It's not the winter solstice, and the polar bears are walking out on the ice and eating seals, folks. So the polar bears are fine, but the humans are not. Which is why we have this channel and a seismic update. The only thing of note is in Iran. And it looks like a Christmas tree of aftershocks on a stacked up 6.1. Which has been downgraded by the friendly USGS. Now. This is the KP currently. And we've just, the uh, northern coronal hole has decoupled. And we're dropping back down epically. Boom. Boom. Back to zero. This is lithospheric flexure anomaly. Heads up! So earthquake warning in three hours worldwide. And we are also going to have increased cosmic ray flux during this next 38 to 48 hours. So we could have a re-eruption of Agung and other volcanoes for the next day and a half. And that's a heads up if you're near one. Subsidence at Orofiocal Ice Cauldron is slowing down. That's good news in Iceland, but the KP was up, so that that may continue to accelerate in the coming days. But there's nothing of note on the map, so we'll be watching. Now, this article says that scientists have studied new photographs of Orofiocal taken yesterday, and their findings show that the subsidence or subsidence in the new ice cauldron is slowing. So this might just be some water that escaped, but the activity is waning, so there's no imminent eruption. I'll leave you links to the article. But they are out there, and they are worried. Look at how worried this man is. He's worried. Boom! Mount Etna. This is a historic eruption, and this is what we're waiting for. All these chump little plumes that were I've been covering for six months is not the event that is going to take temperature down like this event. I'll leave you links to the Wikipedia on Mount Etna. This volcano is very active during high cosmic ray flux. It has a high eruptive history uh, with massive explosions during the mini ice age. Boom! And earlier, as well as the Dalton Minimum, it's been recently active, and it's part of a group of volcanoes called, folks, if you don't know, the Decade Volcanoes. And there are 16 identified as volcanoes that if you live near, you should be moving far the away from. Ha <laughs> ha. So this is the first Grand Solar Minimum heads up when it comes to volcanoes. If you're near any of the Decade Volcanoes, you need to get away. You will get links to this. And in order to find the links at the bottom of the video, down here below the bottom left here, you'll see a little spot that says show more. Click on that. That's what I spend all day gathering. The footnotes, folks. It's the footnotes. The Geminids and Phaethon, 2300 Phaethon coming soon. T minus four days. The Geminids, the King of Meteor Showers peak the 13th and the 14th. That's Wednesday. I got the map. Boom! <laughs> there it is. If you live in the U.S., I'm sorry. So green is good. Everyone else can suck it. So if you live in the green in uh, the U.S., That'll be good Geminid viewing. That includes me. The Geminids will peak on the 13th. Now, guys, last night I went out right before I put the last log in the wood-burning stove that has a new chimney. <coughs> and I saw two green plasma fireballs. It was awesome. We have no light pollution here. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you can't get more nowhere than here. It's so dark. And they're gonna. it's going to be good. Trust me. 
especially if you live in a place like I do. Now, the Geminids will peak on the night of the 13th and the morning of the 14th. It could be go as long as the 15th. They don't have any real conclusive evidence, but Phaethon is coming uh, on the 16th. So we have four days of wonderful fireball coverage. Nothing yet in the uh, media. I thought that the ones I saw last night might be covered, but they weren't. So that's a heads up. Have fun. Go out. Breathe some fresh air. And if you live in North America and on the green areas, you're going to be able to see something. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. We're still waiting for the volcanic uptick to start cooling the planet, but the sun is helping to cool the planet on its own. If you don't know about solar cycles, please Google it. Please Google the connection between solar cycles and the climate and start learning something about the actual change that you are experiencing. Be safe.